Seventh grade lesson 11.2 is comparing data displayed in box plots. And since we're looking at box plots again, I want to just do a very, very quick refresher of the anatomy of a box plot. So let's say we're looking at the number of points high school basketball player scored during the games he played throughout his season organized on a box plot. So he took all of his games that he played and he, um, he determined how many points he scored in all of those games and he plotted it on a box plot. Um, so this value over here would represent the highest number in the whole data set the, um, off the whisker over here. That's 30. So he had one game where he scored 30 points in a game. That's a good game. And this point over here is the lowest value in the whole data set. That is uh, 15. He scored 15 in one game. That was his worst game. Here is the median of the information. So that is when he laid out all of the, that information, the very middle number was here, 21. He scored 21 was the, the middle value on that. And then and that's the median. That's the center of all of the data. And then here is the, we call that the lower quartile. That is the median of all of the information that would have fallen in the lower half. So you would take the lower half, everything below 21, all of the data below 21, and find the median, the center number of that. And this is called the upper quartile. That is all of these values that fell between here and this upper half. Uh, that's the center of that. So you can see that this is the spread. This is kind of the range where everything, they call the whole thing that's in here the interquartile range from here to here. So all of the data fell within this category with the median um, being more this way. That just meant that there was a lot more data. If it was a dot plot, you'd have a high, a several more dots coming up this way. And then it eases off. He has several data sets that go this way, but it eases off and spreads out this way even more. So that's why this looks more spread out than this. So you, when you look at these, you can almost imagine it going like this. Well, let me do that again like this, and then slowly easing off until it gets to there. So um, if it were dot plots, it would look like that. The median kind of tells where things leaned more um, within the interquartile range. So there's kind of the box plot review. And this is that same box plot that we were just looking at. Um, they show five key values to represent a set of data, the least and greatest values, least and greatest, the lower and upper quartile, lower quartile, upper quartile, and the median, the middle number. To create a box plot, arrange the data in order and divide them into four equal sized parts or quarters and draw the box and the whiskers as shown. Um, so looking at this, find the least and greatest value. The least value is here at 15. The greatest value is here at 30. Find the median and describe what it means for the data. The median is right here, the line that's inside of the uh, box, and it represents the middle or the center of all of the data. So tw the median is 21, and it's the center of all the data once it's ordered least to greatest. Find and describe the lower and upper quartiles. Again, the quartiles are the medians of the two halves. The, this one is the lower quartile because it's the median, the center of all the data that's in the lower half. And this is the upper quartile because it's the median of all the data that's in the upper half. So lower quartile will be 17 and a half and upper quartile will be 27 and a half. So I went ahead and wrote here the lower Q, lower quartile is 17 and a half, upper Q, 27 and a half. They are the center of the upper and lower halves is what they are. And finally, they want us to find the interquartile range, which is the difference between the lower and upper quartiles, these two numbers. And it's represented by the, it represents the length of the whole box. Find the interquartile range. Now remember range we had talked about is the range of this whole data set would take the larger number and subtract from it the smaller value, and that would give you the range how far from here to there. 
interquartile range wants how far is it inside the box from the the in the lower quartile to the upper quartile so to do that we take that upper quartile number which was 27.5 and we subtract from it the lower quartile number which was 17.5 and so that that subtracts out to 10. so if we ask just for the range of this data set uh, we would get 30 minus 15 which is 15 but if we ask for the interquartile range of this data set, it's going to be 10. They're looking for the spread between the, uh, the quartiles. So that's it for this section. So then they go on to ask us to compare two dot plots to each other. I mean, not dot plots, sorry, box plots to each other. In the previous lesson, we compared dot plots and we used the shape center and spread of those to compare them and you're going to do the same thing with the box plot the shape center and spread so this box plot shows a distribution of time spent shopping by two different groups you have uh, group a and you can see the least amount of shopping was done by this person here and the most amount was done by this person here in group B, the least amount of shopping done by this person here, fairly close, and the most amount of shopping done by this person here. Let's compare the shapes of the box plots. So I would first look at the lengths of the boxes. These lengths of the boxes look pretty close to the same. They are very similar. And then I would look at the whiskers. They have It's shorter up on the upper part, so is it here, longer on the lower part. That's that same there too. So in both plots, the right whisker is shorter than the left whisker. They ask us to compare the center, the median. Um, on group A, the median is right here. It's about 47-ish, 47.5 apparently. And group B's median is way down here. That means that there was a bigger chunk um, in this area of people that shopped in this range in group B and a bigger chunk of uh, people in group A shopped in this range, so slight difference. Uh, the group B, the median is 40. This means that median's shopping time for group A is seven and a half minutes more. So to find the difference in center is look at their medians and subtract the smallest one from the largest one to find the difference between them when you compare them. And then how do I compare the spread of the box plots? I look at their interquartile range that was this whole section is the interquartile. So I look at their interquartile range. I take this number and I subtract it from that number to find the interquartile range. Group A was 55 minus 30, so 25 minutes of range. Group B um, was 59 minus 32, and so they did uh, 26 uh, minutes, so one minute more. The whiskers have similar lengths with group A slightly shorter than group B's. So you have something very similar going on on your interquartile range, on your spread. The spread is fairly similar. The shape is fairly similar. The only thing that's pretty different on this example is the center. Your median is much higher over here, so there was a bigger chunk of time spent up here in group A, and your median is lower here. So there was a little bit of a big uh, chunk that, of people that spent less time shopping. But fairly similar data for group A and group B. That's what you're doing to compare these. You check their shape, check their center, check the spread. All right, the last example, those box plots were really similar. This one has some box plots that look a little more different. So let's take a look at these. Um, the box plot shows the distribution of the number of team wristbands sold daily by two different stores over the same time period in store A they sold the team wristbands in this kind of a configuration and in store B in this configuration. So let's, let's before we even go compare them, let's kind of let our brains make sense of, of what happened. Um, store A, they sold, uh, the most amount they sold was almost 80 and the least amount of sold they was about 25. In store B, the most they sold was about 75 and the least they sold was a little more than 40. Um, in the median of information um, for store A, they sold um, kind of in that middle range of all the information that they had as they collected it, a little over 
42. The median over here of all the information they collected, they uh, sold a little more than 50. And their interquartile range, this was spread out a little more um, between 30 and 55. This was spread out a little less, so they had a big grouping of uh, days where they sold similar amounts, somewhere between just below 50 and 65. So let your brain always kind of absorb what's going on, and then we can go into um, comparing them. The shape, we're going to look at the length of the boxes. Uh, the length of this box in store A is longer than store B. That means that their, their sales of the wristbands was spread out um, more widely, and these were concentrated much more small. So store A's box and right whiskers are longer than store B's. Um, that was just the length of boxes, length of whiskers, they said. It's stretched out real long on this side, short on this side. On store B, it's short on both sides. So they don't have as much of an outlier in store B. Store A has a big outlier way out here. Compare the centers of the box plots. Again, that's the difference between the medians. Well, this median is right around 42 or 43. This median is about maybe 51, so 51 minus 43-ish. Well, they'll tell us here, store A's median is about 43 and store B's is about 51. So 51 minus 43 is going to give us 8. So there's a difference of 8 between them. Store A's median is close to store B's minimum value. So about 50% of store A's daily sales were less than the sales on store B's worst day. And you can see that here, like the majority of their sales are going to be in this area of the sales of the bracelets are going to be in this where the center is at. And that's like the worst day for store B. So clearly they were doing better, right? Compare the spreads of the box plots. The diff that's the difference between the interquartile ranges. Um, you can even just visually look at it that this has a, l a larger spread than this, but you can get the calculations by taking this value and subtracting that value from it. Same with this one. Store A has a greater spread. Its range and interquartile range are both greater. Four, four of store B's key values are greater than store A's corresponding values. So store B had a greater number of sales overall. So when they say four of their values, we have this um, out of the five values we look at, one, two, three, four, five, they weren't better than store A. Store B wasn't better than store A on the um, highest number that they had sold in one day, but their, um, their median is higher than their median, so they s overall sold more. Um, their inter upper quartile um, is higher than their upper quartile, so it demonstrates, again, overall they sold more. Lower quartile is quite a bit higher than their lower quartile, so overall they appear to have sold more. And their worst day of selling those bracelets is much higher than the worst day for store A. So that's what they meant by four of store B's values are greater than store A's. One, two, three, four of them are better. Store A did have this one that's better, So, but that's just that one. Remember, we're looking at the majority grouping. The box really tells you the majority of those numbers fall in here. So you can see that store B did a much better job. So it's just evaluating what's happening there. Take a look at their shape. Use these as examples. Take a look at their center, the median. Take a look at the spread, the interquartile range. Um, that's what this lesson is doing.